Good morning, Cornerstone slash Restore Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm ready with my coffee and my word. Why don't you join me this morning? Come on. Let's go. What holds your heart? What stirs your soul? What matters come to mind? The cares you keep, the thoughts you think, it's not all wasted time. Seek and you will find. Joy still comes in the morning, hope still walks with the hurting. If you're still alive and breathing, praise the Lord. Don't stop dancing and dreaming, there's still good news worth repeating. So lift your head and keep singing, praise the Lord. roll by we wonder why we lost our way from home our father finds the child inside we had left for growing old awake 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 my soul still comes in the morning hope still walks with the hurting if you're still alive and breathing praise the lord don't stop dancing and dreaming there's still good news worth repeating so lift your head and keep singing praise the lord Let everything let everything, let everything oh, praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. Let everything in the working, let everything in the waiting, let, everything let it praise, praise the Lord. Let everything in the blessing, let everything in the breaking, let everything come on and praise, praise the Lord. Let everything in the dying, let everything the rising, let, everything let it praise the Lord. Lord. still walks with the hurting if you're still alive and breathing praise the lord don't stop dancing and dreaming there's still good news worth repeating so lift your head and keep singing praise the lord joy still comes in the morning Hope still walks with the hurting. If you're still alive and breathing, praise the Lord. Don't stop dancing and dreaming. There's still good news worth repeating. So lift your head and keep singing. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord this morning. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank, you, Thank Jesus. you, Jesus. Glory to you, Lord. Amen. 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 He alone is worthy. Whatever you're going through, I can promise, promise you this. You are going to see a victory. Yes. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't breathe in. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. My 
God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, you see, there's power in Jesus' name. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. Oh, yes. And I'm not backing down from any giant. Because I know how this story ends. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, just worship your way through your battle right now. That is the best thing that you can do through your battle. Worship your way through. Come on. Hallelujah. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good, Lord. You turn it thank for you, Lord. Good. Oh, you take what the enemy meant for evil. You turn it for good, you turn it for good, and I'm gonna see a victory. Come on, sing. I'm gonna see a victory. Oh, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Thank you, Lord, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Oh. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Oh, sing it one more time. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. Thank you, I'm so thankful you, that I know who's winning my battles. I'm thankful that God sees the victory for us before we even see it. So that's why I am so encouraged that anytime I pray a prayer for anything that needs to be done, that it's a victory waiting to happen. And he sees it before we even know it. And he, he makes it happen. And like I said before, it's not always in our time, but it's in God's time. And I'm so thankful that he, we can depend on him. Yes. We can count on him yes. to Amen. see our victories for us. So today I want to pray for you, whatever it is that you have need of, I want to pray for that. And I just want encourage you to send out a prayer request to me via email or on the Facebook comments area and just let us know what you have prayer of you know um, if it's just me praying that's okay but if we all pray together do you know how powerful that prayer is yes. so today when I pray I want you to pray with me and agree with me 
so we can have that power together, yes. believing that God's going to work it all out for our good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I, I just thank you today because this is your day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And Lord, I just thank you for all that you have already done for us. But I'm so thankful for what you are going to do. So we're walking in faith today, believing that you're going to work it all out for our good. Thank you, Lord. What the enemy has caused for evil, you're going to turn it around for our good today. Thank you, so I thank you, Lord, for prosperity today. I thank you, Lord, for healing today. Thank you, I thank you, Lord, for strength today, Lord. Yes. I thank you, Father God, that you are making a way where there seems to be no way. And Lord, I just thank you for peace of mind today in our lives. And Lord, I just thank you for what you have done what you're going to do in Jesus name I pray amen, amen. Thank, you, thank you Jesus Lord, Lord you're so Jesus. good thank, thank you Lord. Lord you are our way maker yes you are you are our miracle worker and today we're gonna worship you with our whole hearts thank you father Lord you're so good
maker, miracle worker, way maker, miracle worker, way maker, miracle worker, way maker, miracle worker. Do you believe that he is a way maker? That he is a miracle worker? Oh, yeah. Come on. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. And even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, Waymaker, Waymaker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. That's who you are, Lord. Yes. Wow. Thank you, That's who he is today. Yes. He is the way maker. I'm so thankful that one day he made a way for me. And not only one day, but he continues over and over and over again to make a way for me. Where there doesn't seem to be a way, he's the way maker. Where I don't know which way to turn, he's the way maker. When I don't know which direction to go, he's the way maker. When I don't know what I'm supposed to turn, whether to the right or to the left, or just go straight, he's the way maker. I'm thankful that I can put my hope in the Lord, my trust in the Lord, my dependency in the Lord, because he will never let me down. He will never direct me wrong. He will never let me go away on my own, but he will continue to lead, guide, and direct my steps if I will continue to follow him. Man, that's what it's all about, following the way maker today. What a wonderful, what a wonderful time of worship. Thank you, Lifestyle. Didn't they do a great job today lifting us to the Lord? And uh, what a blessing it is to be able to gather together in the presence of the Lord. And in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. And that's what we're experiencing. That's what we're feeling. That's what we are having an atmospheric transformation right here in the studio sanctuary today by the presence of the Lord. Glad to have you along. Thanks for being here. Good to see each and every one of you that are with us on Facebook and on YouTube this morning. God bless each and every one of you. So I hope you enjoyed the montage that uh, we ended with last Sunday, uh, the video montage of the church family. And hey, I've got a request for you. If you'd like to be involved in that, if you would like to be a part of that, we would love to do another one with some new pictures or new videos. If you could get those to us um, at the church office, uh, just uh, info at go to CCC, or if you want to get a hold of Shalito and text them to her, whatever you want to do, we would be happy to get some new photos. And uh, we're trying to put together a new montage. Be a lot of fun, I think, for you to see and for us to get to be a part of. All right. Well, 
If you have your Bibles, open them with me because I'm going to get into the word of the Lord today. And I'm talking on the subject of full, F-U-L-L. That's my subject today. And the notes hopefully are available right there in the uh, uh, Facebook app or the YouTube app, whatever app you're using. Or if you're using it on a TV, maybe you can access the notes that way. And instead, then you can go on your smartphone and get the notes to the message at the Uversion a Bible app. And we are there. So um, all the links should be available and you can get a hold of them hopefully easily and follow along. We're starting off in Ephesians chapter number three and verse number 14, Paul talking to the church, talking to Christians, just like you and me. And so that's where we're going to begin today. And this is what the apostle Paul said. When I think of the wisdom and scope of his plan, I fall down on my knees and pray to the father of all the great family of God some of them already in heaven and some down here on earth, that out of his glorious unlimited resources, he will give you the mighty inner strengthening of his Holy Spirit. Sounds good to me and should sound good to you. And I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts, living within you as you trust in him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love, and may you be able to feel and understand, as all God's children should, how long, how wide, how deep, and how high his love really is, and to experience this love for yourselves though it's so great that you'll never see the end of it or fully know or understand it. And so at last, you will be filled up with God himself. And that's what we're talking about today, filled up. Actually, the topic is full. (laughs) Everybody say full. If you had too much breakfast this morning, you're full, you know, and uh, whatever, whatever you're full of. And that's what we want to talk about for the next couple of minutes of your time here today. You're full of it, they said to me. And they were right. <laughs> Has anybody ever said that to you? Or have you ever said that to somebody else? Maybe you said it jokingly. Maybe you said it as a matter of fact. But... Maybe you just thought it. You're full of it. But the truth of the matter is that all of us are full of it. Whatever that it is, we're full of something, right? Now, you're full of is an expression that we use either in teasing or in all seriousness when we reply to somebody who makes claims that are outrageous or self-centered. Being full of it is an indicator that someone believes your attitudes and ideas and or ideas, etc., are out of touch with reality. It's a statement about what's inside you. There you go. And that's where we're going today, and that's what we're getting to today. It's all about what's inside you. And that's what my question is, what's inside you? What's inside me? Because what's inside us is what makes the difference. What's inside us is what really matters. What's inside us is what we need to recognize and understand. Jesus had a lot to say about, guess what? What's inside us? Yeah, we were talking about that last week, weren't we? See a theme developing here a little bit. Now, for a few minutes this morning, I want... Each of us, you, me, and those of us that are in the room here today, to ask ourselves this question. What am I full of? 
Let's get honest with ourselves this morning. Let's get real with ourselves. And, and I hope you consider the question, and I hope you recognize that I'm, I'm, I'm being a little silly on purpose, but I'm trying to make a point with that. And the point is this. All of us are full of something. All of us fill our lives with one thing or another. And the question is, what are you filling your life with? What are you filling your mind with? What are you filling your time with? What are you full of? That's the question. What is the it that fills us up if we're full of it? <laughs> what are you full of? Are you full of self? Are you full of fear? Are you full of anger? Are you full of anxiety? Are you full of bitterness? Are you full of negativity? What are you full of? You see, a lot of us have a lot of things that are going on that we are filling ourselves up with, and I think oftentimes inadvertently. So we fill ourselves up with things that we don't really give a lot of thought to, and a lot of credence to, but those things are taking up space in our lives. Those things begin to take up space in our minds. Those things begin to take up space in our hearts. And the question is, what are we giving space to? The Bible says where strife and envy is, there is every evil work. And so if, if we're... we're you know, giving ourselves and filling ourselves with envious thoughts or, or striving thoughts or angry thoughts, then we're actually bringing evil work into our minds and into our hearts without even realizing it, perhaps, without even recognizing it, perhaps. If we are filling ourselves with bitter thoughts and, and with hurtful, hateful thoughts, we're poisoning ourselves. We're bringing and filling ourselves with poison. Poison, and the poison is only going to hurt us and injure us. And so what we ingest is rather important, isn't it? I mean, what we take into ourselves and fill ourselves with really matters and makes a difference in the life that we're to live. And Jesus indeed did have a lot to say about it. So what should we be full of, actually? Because all of us are full of something, but what should we be full of? What should we be filled up with? What should we be accessing and bringing into our lives? In reality, we need to look to Jesus to be filled with his purpose, to be filled with his power, to be filled with his plans for our life. So what we need to do is look to the scriptures to get an understanding and insight into what Jesus said and what was said about him in regards to what fills our lives and what we allow to be filled ourselves rather to be filled with. John chapter 1 and verse number 14 and then verse number 16 says this, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. There's that word full, right? And of his fullness, watch this, of his fullness, we have all received. So we receive from the fullness of Christ. We receive what he pours out what he delivers, what he distributes. And that's what we should be filled with. Colossians chapter two and verse number 10, the apostle Paul said this in regards to what I just mentioned. He said, in him, which is Jesus, in him you are made full. There you go. Who is the head of all principality and power. I love that. In him you are made full. I like that. And I need that. I need to be full by him. I need to be filled up by Jesus. I need to be filled with his presence, with his power, with his purpose, with his plans for my life. 
John chapter 10 and verse number 10, Jesus himself speaking said this, I have come that they, and the they means you, me, us, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. There you go. Having life to the full comes through Jesus Christ. And so whatever else you're filling your life with and whatever else you're allowing to fill you up, if it's not Jesus Christ, if it's not his plan, his purpose, his power, his presence, then it's something else that's taking the place and time that should be relegated or should be designated rather for him. You see, we need to be made full, but the only way to be made full of the Christ life is through Jesus Christ himself. We need Jesus Christ to fill us up fully, totally. Can I get a witness, somebody? Can I get an amen, somebody out there? Come on. And so if we're talking about being full of the Christ life, what does that mean? What does that consist of? Well, first of all, it consists of faith. Acts chapter 11 and verse number 24 talks about Barnabas, who was a follower, a disciple of Jesus. But it says of him, he was full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Barnabas lived his life full of faith. He lived a full life, full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. Jude chapter 1 and verse number 20 in your Bible says this, keep building on the foundation of your most holy faith as the Holy Spirit helps you to pray. You keep building on the foundation of faith. You keep letting yourself be filled up as the Holy Spirit works in you to bring that fullness up, to to lift that tank. Instead of running on empty, we should be running on a full tank, right? Indeed, each and every one of us should. Secondly, what does the Christ life consist of? It consists of hope. Romans chapter number 15 and verse number 13 says this, I pray that God who gives hope will bless you with complete happiness and peace because of your faith. And may the power of the Holy Spirit fill you with hope. There you go. May the power of the Holy Spirit fill you with hope hope. I need to be filled with hope. I need to be filled with expectation. Because if you're filled with hope, if you're filled with expectation, you expect that God is going to make a way, even where you don't see a way possible. He's the way maker. They sang about it just a few minutes ago. Come on now. And so, you know, when you have hope, it's an expectation that God is going to do what he said he would do. It's an expectation that God is going to perform his word. It's an expectation that even though what I see isn't good and isn't positive and isn't what I want to see right now, I have hope, which is expectation, that God is going to make a way and turn things around on my behalf, on your behalf on our behalf. That's hope. I need to be filled with hope. Now, when you're filled with hopeful expectation, when you're filled with that, you you don't have time to dread. But when you fill yourself with dread, guess what? That hope begins to wane. That expectation begins to fade. And worry begins to take its place. And anxiety begins to crop up instead. Oh, come on, somebody. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. I mean, that's what happens when we don't continue to be filled with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to continue to let our hope tank be filled up, right? Lamentations chapter 3 and verse number 24 says this, My soul can say, 
the Lord is my lot in life. That's why I find hope in him. Hey, it comes from the Lord. You know, where, where does hope come from? Where does faith come from? I mean, it comes from the Lord. It's, it's accessed when we, when we dare to trust in the Lord and dare to look to the Lord and allow him to fill us. What does the Christ life consist of? Again, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it to the full, right? It's full, being full of life. Not just any life, the Christ life, being full of the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Come on now. We're talking about what? Being full. The third thing it consists of is love. Perhaps you've heard faith, hope, and love. 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 12 says this. No one has ever seen God. But if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. There you go. Full expression of God in us is what? Is loving each other. It's it's showing that that we exemplify the love of God. The love of God flows and and abides in us. And we are full of his love when what? When we give that love away and we love one another and we bless one another and we help one another and we encourage one another, right? Paul said this in Romans chapter five and verse number five, he said, the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And that's how it works. The love of God is poured into us, our hearts into our lives, into our inner man that we were talking about last week. We are filled by the Holy Spirit pouring into us the love of God so that the love of God doesn't just reside in us, but so that it overflows and we operate in love to one another and we operate in love to the world that we live in and we operate in love to those around us and we operate in love even to the people that we're living with under our roof. I know that's a scary prospect, right? But <laughs> that sometimes is the most challenging for some reason. But you know, that love is what's important. That love is what's needed. And we can be filled with love as the Holy Spirit pours it into our hearts. Now, notice we talked about faith, hope, and love today. Notice that we are only filled with these attributes by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's the empowerment that God pours into us and pours into our lives, filling us up with what? The Christ life, a full life, a life of faith, a life of hope, a life of love. That's what he wants us to live. That's the best life possible. That's the Christ life. That's Christianity in a nutshell, folks. But it's only accomplished by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 13 and verse number 52, speaking about the Holy Spirit for a couple of minutes here, it says, the believers were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. And I'm here to tell you, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, joy comes right along. I mean, you can't get filled with the Holy Spirit apart from joy. Joy will be there. And it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. There's that full again that we're talking about. You, you get full of good things. Why? Because God doesn't do anything bad. God does good for us and has good for us if we would just open ourselves up to more of God. And so maybe that's what I'm saying today, that, that we need less of some of the other stuff in our lives and more of what God wants to do and what God has and what God plans and what God purposes and what God wants wants to pour into us. Open yourselves up. Open up the word. 
Open up a time of prayer. Open up communication between you and God. Instead of focusing on everything else that's going on in the world, give time to the Lord and let him fill you up to overflowing by the Holy Spirit. And as a result, you'll be filled with joy. It'll take the sorrow away, the sadness away, the the insecurities away, the anxieties away, all of the challenges of the time that we're living in. Hey, God has a response. God has a help. We have an answer. There is a hope that's the anchor for our souls, and it's available for us. All we have to do is call out, reach out, cry out, and say, Lord, help me. Lord, fill me. Fill me up with your presence. Fill me up with faith. Fill me up with hope. Fill me up with each and every one of these things today. I need the love of God shed abroad in me, poured out in me by the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit to work in my life. You need the Holy Spirit to work in your life today. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 18, Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus, and this is what he said to the Christians there. He said, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with, with the Holy Spirit. There you go. You see, that's what we're talking about, being full, but full of the right thing. And in that one verse, that one verse kind of encapsulates this whole thought today. That one verse that I just read kind of just, just is, is a microcosm of this entire talk that I'm sharing. Don't be drunk with wine. It'll ruin your life. In, in other words, be careful what you fill yourself with. Be careful what you allow to fill your life. You should be filled with the Holy Spirit first and foremost. Above all else, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Above all else, let the Holy Spirit fill you and thrill you and impact your life in a positive way. Listen, we need to be running not on empty. We need to be running on full tanks. We need to be running on full tanks of faith, on full tanks of hope, on full tanks of love in this world that we live in today. Let me tell you, we need it. There, there's craziness all around. We just had a situation, a couple of houses down from where we live, and uh, a lady and a uh, an elderly lady, um, maybe middle-aged, I guess, would be accurate. She just went off the rails, man. She just went off the hinges, and she threatened my other neighbor that lives next door to her with a hatchet. <laughs> and I'm like, and so the cops obviously came out, and, and psyche valves and all of that are just, just some, some wild times that we're living in, right? And you never know, but guess what? This we do know. We need to be filled up with God. We need to be filled up with his presence. We need to be filled up with his power. We need to be filled up to overflowing with the goodness of God, with the mercies of God, with the peace of God that passes all understanding, with the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. Now abides these three, faith, hope, and love. We need to be filled up to overflowing by the Holy Spirit with each and every one of those. In conclusion today, I want to take you to Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 9. I want to finish off with this, with this verse because Paul was, again, uh, not just writing to the church and to Christians, but in this instance, he was praying. And this was his prayer for the church, for Christians. His prayer was this, we ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will. Now, it's Christians, people that are already saved, people that are already following Jesus, but he's praying for the Christians and he's praying and he's saying, we ask God to fill you, not to save you, you're already saved, but to fill you with the knowledge of his will, with all the wisdom and understanding that his spirit gives. 
Lord, help us in this hour. We need that prayer request prayed over us. I don't know about you. I, I, I definitely need it prayed over me in this hour. But I believe that every Christian needs this prayed over them in this hour. Lord, fill us with the knowledge of your will, with all the wisdom and understanding that your spirit gives. That's what we need in this hour that we live in. That's what we need in this day and time that we're living in. We need to be filled, full of God's knowledge, of God's plan, of God's purpose, of God's wisdom. I need all of that and so much more. How about you? Can we pray about that? Can I pray for you today? Can I make it a matter of prayer? Maybe you've been anxious. Maybe you've been, you know, just, just all over the map. Maybe you've been filling yourself up with a lot of things. I mean, you know, one of the worst things that's happened during the time of COVID that we're in is that I have been ingesting a lot of stuff that I shouldn't probably be ingesting. I'm talking about nutrition wise. And I don't think there's a lot of nutrition on the stuff that I've been putting into my mouth and into my body. I've been filling myself with a lot of things. Well, guess what? The scales are letting me know that it's not a good thing. And I think if you step on the spiritual scales in the same vein, it'll let you know that it's not a good thing to fill yourself up with too much other stuff and not enough God stuff. Is that breaking it down enough for you? I think that's, that's where we are. And so I want to pray for you because maybe you feel like, man, that's me. That's where I am. And I think all of us get in that place at one time or another. You know, it doesn't mean you're not a Christian. doesn't mean you're, you're a bad person. Who? No, it means, it means all of us, you know, need help. All of us need the Lord. All of us need to be continually filled with what God has for us. And I think it's just a recognition of that. So I'm going to pray for you today. Would you join me? Would you pray with me? Come on, let's pray right now. Lord, I look to you because you're the source and you're the help and you're what we have need of. You're the one that can fill us up with a full life, the Christ life. You're the one that can fill us up with faith, fill us up with hope, fill us up with love by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray that all of those byproducts, Lord, the peace of God and, and the joy of the Lord, and Lord, all of those, all of those byproducts, the mercy of God, and uh, all of those would come along also and be poured into us. Lord, we just open our hearts right now, and I pray for those that are opening themselves up to you and are saying yes to you. Pray, Lord God, that you would right now begin to pour into their lives, pour into their spirits, pour into their persons, the inner person. Lord, to pour in right now the grace that they need, the strength that they need, the hope that they need, the encouragement that they need, the help that they need. Lord, as you are pouring, may we be receptacles right now and receive all that you have for us. Fill us up, Lord, to overflowing. Fill us up, Lord, I pray. And Lord God, let it just overflow our souls this morning. Overflow our spirits this morning. Overflow us with your righteousness, with your grace, with your goodness, with all of the wonderful things that you pour into us and constantly want to give us. Lord, may we be receptacles today of your benefit and your blessing. In Jesus' name, we receive it. And if you receive it this morning, say amen wherever you are. Come on, if you prayed that prayer, say amen with me and let's agree together. God is good, isn't he? God is constantly giving. God is constantly pouring. We just need to be reminded to go back and open up and say Lord, pour into me again. Fill me up to overflowing so that I can be full of you. That's what it's all about. I want to be full of Jesus. I want to be full of his plans, of his purposes, of his passion. I want to be filled up to overflowing of the life that he came to bring me, which is that full life, that Christ life. That's available. 
You can experience it. You just can't let all the other stuff take the space and place of what God wants to pour into you. Well, that's what I have for you today. I hope that's helpful. I hope that's a blessing to somebody besides myself. I know I'm always talking to me and talking about me, but I love you and appreciate you and uh, miss seeing your face. And God bless each and every one. We love you dearly. And we thank God for each and every one of you. Take a listen to uh, a new voice that you're going to hear and share a little bit here about what's going on. And uh, again, thanks for tuning in today. And we hope to see you again real soon. God bless you. We're out of here. Good morning, everyone. This is Zach. I'm here to remind you about your giving options. Mine is to be mailing offering to the church. P.O. Box 9032, Torres, California 90508. Second is to give online via PayPal, sent to info at go to ccc.com. Third and finally, text the word GIVE to 855 512 9032. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Faithlift. Give us a like on our video. Be sure to stay connected with us at Restore Church on Facebook. Hope you guys have a great day and safe week. And hope to see you all soon. Bye.